to Sibisa live at the conference center and the national theater this is in the decade and a few years ago our time changes music is still very good good morning nathan as well hello good how are you doing i'm okay we're, we're looking forward to a great day today with lots of promise what are the papers saying well the daily graphic says government to review land acquisition committee start work next year seek red- seek redress with law and not violence that's the chief justice speaking daily graphic exhibits uh, professionalism and fairness ashanti regional minister extols at launch of spotlight all right on the front page of the ghanaian times first of all we've got the countdown we're in the 30s now can you imagine 39 okay, days 39 years, but on the daily graphic it says 38 and there's always this thing yes. of do you count the day itself as part of it or the day before is your count you know yeah. you always go but the fact of the matter is we're in the 30s guys 39 days to election the election 2020. is coming okay yeah, front page stories ec lodges complaints against disqualified presidential aspirants mm. cid ready to grill them over alleged forgery mm. Government has undertaken 847 projects in Greater Accra region in four years, says the president. 20 million euro solid and liquid waste plants for northern region begins, and courts declares Adempa family owners of Kukurubite, Langma, and Tuba lands. Mm. Yeah. The Daily Guide says drama in court over scenario guns. Mm. Mm. Amidu fires back at Mahama. Works begin on 20 million euro. Um, Northern regional waste plants. Mm-hmm. We have done well for teachers, Napo, and Nana recounts achievements. The Chronicle. President Okufado tells Shai Sudoku chiefs, the umbrella is falling apart. Come and sit on the <laughs> elephant. <laughs> Okay. I won't take back COVID-19 stimulus package given to traders, says mm. President Mahama. And Professor Benner's ghost chasing suspects. That's mm. the question the Chronicle is asking. Mm. Dying and falling ill. Mm-hmm. The Herald says procurement and feasibility issues emerged on Zoom Lions 10 waste treatment contract. Mm. Paris lied. Government yet to compensate me. I also was walking by election gun victim screams in pain. Oh, Charlie. Gabi Ochidaku exhumes Ekufado's failures in PDS scandal. Hmm. And AG's witness discredits state's crucial evidence in Opuni trial. The new weekend crusading guide, Ekufado to guard chiefs, will build resilient chieftaincy institution. Also, NPP member shocks party with donation in Takrade. Hmm. Uh, why Occupy Ghana filed Amico's brief in Mensa versus Auditor General and others. And Tamar soon to get solid and liquid treatment plant as regional minister breaks ground okay the daily statesman says that kufado has recruited 93,724 teachers more to follow says napo help tackle the ills of society president appeals to presidential authorities and who is the real mahama august freebies are not good for the people October, take the government stimulus package and chop for free. Mm. The Ghanaian Observer, Ghana chiefs applaud Kufuado. Mm. You've delivered on your promises. Amadou Lambas Mahama, over 93,000 teachers employed in Kufuado's first term, says the education minister. NPP is the party for the masses, <laughs> says Vice President Baumia, and Northern Solid and Liquid Treatment Plant in the offing. And the BNFT says, government borrowing no longer a matter of choice. Employee compensation, wages and salaries exceed revenues. Negotiate with employers to pay contributions on consolidated salaries that, according to the SNIP boss, care needed to prevent a COVID-19 spike in January. Health director warns protocol disregard heightens as Christmas and elections approach and work begins on 20 million euro solid and liquid waste plants for northern region. The finder, teachers better off under Nanado, says the education minister. 847 projects implemented in Greater Accra, says the president. MPP is the party for the masses, says Dr. Baumia. Government calls on clergy to help address secessionist misinformation and business rebounds at some eateries. Okay. Let's take you on Line for now, citynewsroom.com. Lots of stories. Police should have done proper investigation before a rainy scenario. This is his lawyer, Baba Jamal. Also, president says work and apply the law without partisan consideration. This is to security agencies. Other stories one million dollar crow case. Senior ministers appeal against the Malavu upheld, and no teacher union declares strike under Kufuado government. This is Napo. Other stories parts of Ablikum are still flooded 24 hours after rainfall. Also, health ministry gets clearance to employ 23,000 health professionals 
and something is systematically wrong with the economy tech tech calls for disclosure from government citybusinessnews.com grpc wins best investment promotion agency in western central africa for the fifth time also building trust is key to attracting the right investment to be the 14th and there won't be mass recruitment anytime soon goldfields ghana tells host communities we go to myjoyonline.com ndc chairman of our also north constituency suspended also alleged voter secessionist dies in police custody and uh Ododo 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 class neil and tevander poi confirms two arrests our uh, nbc says police are being selective star fm intervening my disqualification independent candidate begs also police drop charges against nbc vice chair alaji scenario meanwhile alabano chief say muhammad deserves our praise for the december polls meanwhile an independent candidate says i'm not doing enough against corruption if you go to gna state withdraws charges against alaji scenario also, Akufado's government outlines achievements in teacher transformation and government will guard the peace. Akufuado tells greater Accra people. Let's get into the details of the story, starting with Kukui. What do you have in the Times? We've got a lot in the Times. Maybe we can go to the northern region. Yes. Work has begun on the construction of a 20 million euro solid and liquid waste treatment plant for mm. the people of Balahi in Tamale in the mm. northern region. Okay. While the solid waste plant is expected to be completed within four months, the liquid waste facility will be ready in 12 months. Mm. The northern regional minister, Mr. Salifu Said, on behalf of the president, cut the sword for the commencement of work of the facility. Again, it's estimated to cost 20 million euro and to handle 200 tons of waste per day. Nice this will one. provide a sustainable solution to recover and recycle solid and liquid waste in the region. It's also going to help create jobs for the country. He says about 75 direct jobs and 200 indirect jobs for youth in the region. Amazing stuff. Well, if you go to the front page of the Daily Graphic, there's a, there's, there's a land issue mm. there, and it says... Uh, government to review land acquisition committee starts work next year. Now, President Ekufado has assured the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs that he will set up a committee to take a comprehensive look into the issue of the compulsory acquisition of lands by the government in the region. Mm. The committee, which will be established to start work next year, will look at the possibility of restoring lands to their allodial owners, he mm. said. President Zekufado gave the assurance when he addressed the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs in Dodoa yesterday as part of his working tour of the region. He noted that the committee would make appropriate recommendations for a decision by the government and admitted that, quote, a few weeks to the holding of elections, the setting up of this committee this year may not be feasible, end quote. Right. He's been talking to the chiefs quite a bit. The, the front page of the Chronicle has that headline, mm -hmm. the umbrella is falling apart, come and sit on the elephants. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the president has jabbed the opposition in D.C., saying the umbrella has developed holes and was gradually breaking apart. He's not, he said it's not in good condition and it's not advisable for people to continue to stay under it. So he's mm -hmm. urging the chiefs and people of Shai or Sudoku who haven't been voting for the NPP to come and sit on the back of the elephant this time. He said this at a derby of chiefs in the area as part of his four-day tour of the greater Accra region. Mm -hmm. He spoke in Akan, told the gathering to vote for him to lead the country for another four years. And he said he told the vice president that Shai Sudoku has not really come to sit behind the elephant before he said all the time you are under the umbrella mm. nowadays i can see the umbrella is breaking so he said this year please choose us instead well let's still the on way. the campaign tour there are different things happening yes. so on page six of the daily guide uh, story says nana recounts achievements so president kufado yesterday took the chiefs and people of the greater Accra region through what he had been doing in the region for the past three years and 10 months mm -hmm. since he took over the administration of the country. Now, he was speaking at a meeting with leaders and members of the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs at Dodoa, and he said, quote, there are 847 projects being executed in the region with 40 with 423 completed and the remaining 424 ongoing and quote now he go he went on to detail which sector had received what in mm -hmm. terms of numbers of the projects and all of that but matthew poco prempa the education minister doctor he was speaking yesterday mm -hmm. and he said that the mpp government had made conscious efforts to ensure that teacher-centered initiatives were introduced to bring some relief to those in the profession. Mm -hmm. According to him, the government had, among other things, ensured the restoration of teacher training allowance, ensured prompt payment of teachers' salaries, upgraded the status and skills of teachers, and boosted teaching and learning. So mm -hmm. he said that 
um, during one of those yes. sessions they were doing. Yes. Before we yes. talk yes. about the arrest and police issues, still on chieftaincy and politics, Mama deserves our praise. Alavanyu Chief, Story on Style from Online, Paramount Chief of the Alavanyu Traditional Area, Togbega Cheje Atakra the Seventh, has said the flag of the NDC, John Mahama, deserves praises from the chiefs and people of Alavanyu for their choice, for his choice of a running mate. According to the chief, the choice of a Jinan Opokwa Jiman is connected to the people of Alavanyu is an action that deserves commendation. He made the statement while addressing the Deba in honor of the prof who was on a home visit to Alavanyu as part of a three-day campaign tour of the Volta region, which ended later that evening. And then he goes on to make quotes about why he thought that was the case. Now, there are a couple of stories about the arrest of a gentleman for Ayawasu Central and the follow charges dropped against Allah I don't know whether the papers have those yes, stories. Yes, yes, the Daily Guide has it on the front page. It says, mm-hmm. drama in court over scenario guns. Yes. Now, there was drama at the Kaneshi Magistrate Court Accra yesterday when a national vice chairman of the NDC, Said Sinari, was put in the dock over allegations relating, relating to the supply of some weapons. Mm. However, the police who took him to court made a U-turn and told the court the suspect should be dismissed. Charged, charged now. yes, and they dropped the charges against him, mm-hmm. and the lawyer was saying that they were all confused initially. Yes, yes, yes. So Sinai was charged together with his uh, alongside his accuser Tahiru Ahmed, mm-hmm. who is the chairman of the NDC in Ayala so North constituency in Accra. Tahiru Ahmed lodged the complaint against Sinai that the NDC group distributed weapons to some youth to cause mayhem. Sinai even admitted ownership of one of the weapons but denied the other, which the police kept as exhibits. We were lawyer for Sinai. And MP, former MP for Akwetia, Baba Jamal said the police should have conducted further investigations into the issue before processing him for court. According to him, the court proceedings were a waste of their time, considering all charges against the vice chairman were dropped. Now, Baba Jamal said on Arab News, he expected a thorough investigation to be conducted because the charges against Sinari did not hold any water. So that story is also on the GNA who say state withdraws charges against Alaji Sina. And those of you who want more details, I'm going to see from online.com. But then there are a few other stories. I wanted to take you somewhere else completely. Oh, yeah? Parts of Ablikum are still flooded 24 hours after rainfall. This story is on citynewsroom.com by Delali Adogla Besa. It says, some areas of Ablikum, Agape Top in the Gansan Central Municipality, are still flooded over 24 hours after a rainfall on Wednesday, October 28th. Several shops at Ablikuma, Gapi Top in Accra, were forced to remain closed following the flooding of the area. According to shop owners and residents, Wednesday's rains left the community flooded, restricting access to homes and shops. Odro Gatewus, who has two shops in the area, told City News, this was the third time this year he had encountered this kind of flooding. We don't have any drainage here. So all the water that comes from the top comes down here. If they construct the drains, by all means, the water will pass. He also said there were people who could not access their homes because of the flooding. Um, Ibrahim, another person called Ibrahim said they needed drainage. Now they said the municipal assembly and MP for the area Sierra Koboche should be blamed for not being visible enough during their struggle. Anytime it rains, this is what happens. This is not a party matter. There is only one truth. But the MP hasn't helped us. She d- does not come to our aid. Um, then there are other stories. Raja Barry residents lamenting uh, some stuff about the rains as well. So there's a lot of issues in that area. There's a, a, a place called Antiaku, which was also <laughs> filmed. There's a whole report yes, on yes, CNR yes, yes, yes. on this. We'll probably bring you excerpts of that during the discussion today about the effects of the flooding. All right, let's go back to the Ghanaian Times. For the center spread for information and details on the front page story. Mm. The EC lodges complaints against disqualified presidential aspirants, mm. CID ready to grill them over alleged forgery. Mm-hmm. The Criminal Investigation Department of the Ghana Police Service has received official complaint from the Electoral Commission to conduct a probe into alleged forgery against the five disqualified presidential aspirants for the December 7th elections. According to the EC, those whose matters border on fake voter register and fake signatories on the nomination forms have been referred to the CID for further actions. Mm. So that's Kofi Kranting, which uh, we had that clip this morning on mm-hmm. City Breakfast News. Mar- uh, Mar- Marek Kofi Gan, those were both independent candidates who were disqualified. Akwesi Adai Odike of the United Progress Party, UPP. Kwesi Busumbu of People's Action Party. Mm-hmm. And Nana Ejinim Boating of United Front Party. The Director General of the CID confirmed the receipt of the letter. Out of the 17 aspirants who presented their nomination forms, those five were conte- were sorry disqualified mm-hmm. on grounds of presenting unqualified registered voters. Let me take you to this important one. One million dollar crow case. Senior Minister's appeal against Domelevo upheld against citynution.com and a cry court has upheld an appeal filed by Senior Minister Osafo Mafo. 
and four other officials from the Ministry of Finance against the Auditor General's $1 million disallowance and surcharge in respect of the contract with Crowell and Associates. He was challenging the determination by the Auditor General that the payment of the sum of 4.8 million CDs was without approval from Parliament and the Public Procurement Authority. Mr. Safamafo also said the findings violated his rights to a fair hearing. The court agreed with his contention, saying the Auditor General ought to have at least communicated his refusal to inspect the document for stated reasons before going ahead to issue the notices that have given rise to the appeals before the court. It also said the agreement of the Auditor General to inspect the documents was a tacit acknowledgement of their ways. Now, the senior minister and four other officials from Ministry of Finance sued Mr. Demelevo to clear their name in relation to what was said to have been breaches of the Public Procurement Act, resulting in the payment to Crow and Associates. Okay, let's come back to other stories making the news. Mm. Well, here's one mm. international one. The European Union is deploying election observation mission ahead of our elections on December the 7th. Mm -hmm. So, Joseph Borrell, High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy and Vice President of the European Commission, has appointed Mr. Javier Nart, Member of the European Parliament, as Chief Observer okay. for our elections. He said, it's a great honor for me to lead this election observation <coughs> mission, which I assume with a great sense of responsibility. Mm. This is the third time the EU accompanies the election process in Ghana, and he trusts that state authorities, political parties, and all candidates will play their part in promoting a peaceful and credible process. Fantastic. So they will arrive in Accra on the 31st of October. That's just, what, tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And they'll stay until the completion of the electoral process. All and right. then uh, long-term observers will... There's a question I wanted to bring to you on the security side. Alleged voter secessionist dies in police custody. This, again, mm -hmm. we got this story on Eyewitness News, but it's on my jaw online. It says that one of the persons arrested during the suit by Joint Security Team in the Volta region has died in police custody, lawyer has said. A lawyer said. The suspect was among over 100 people who were flown to Accra for their alleged involvement in the unrest by a voter sessionist in September. There was another headline about the Professor Bennett's death and yes, what's happening to... Who's yes, potentially haunting him because, you know, um, on one Chronicle. died in companies in the Chronicle front page. Mm -hmm. It's highly perceived among the suspects in the murder of Professor Benner that the ghost of the deceased is on the warpath against them. Mm -hmm. The prime suspect in the case, James Nanawamba, now deceased, is alleged to have confessed to the second suspect, um, Eja Bidu in Kansa, that he was being haunted by the ghost of the late professor, resulting in sleepless nights in the cells. When Nanawamba was alive and in the course of the ongoing investigation, the two suspects suspects had the rare occasion to be together for mm -hmm. some clarification. That alone is a bit strange. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, the deceased suspect made the confession to Opambo, who is now on admission at the police hospital himself. Wow. And he said the ghost was troubling him, squeezing his neck, resulting in near suffocation. Oh. Is that guilt? I is don't that know. Who knows? Yeah, Who it's, knows? it's but just bizarre. It and now bizarre. we are told now, and this, this revelation about the, uh, the suspect dying in police custody was made during eyewitness news. Umaru Sanda was interviewing the lawyer for a different case, but who happened to be the lawyer for these people? Yeah. And the lawyer said the family had even been told. This is Theophilus, don't call the lawyer. He told uh, Eyewitness News that as far as I know, I can confirm to you that one of the suspects is no more with us. He said the police had not even informed the deceased family about the incident as the police are yet to present an official complaint about the situation, a development he finds worrying. So that's something to keep an eye on, all these things happening in police custody yes. and that type of thing. Okay, no. we have a couple of minutes. Let's rush through a few other stories, okay. Nathan. Well, on the BNFT, the, on, on the BNFT, uh, third page it says government borrowing no longer a matter of choice mm. now genuine concerns have been raised by stakeholders about the country's debt situation with with some with some even fearing it will eventually lead to a situation where it will no longer be sustainable mm. as legitimate as these worries are the uh, the truth be told the data shows there's no way this economy can run without borrowing a closer look at the figures presented by the finance minister ken ofriata indicates that just two items on the expenditure list combined are wages and salaries and compensation of employees which include allowances are more than projected revenues and grants for mm. the period so the story goes on to break down why mm. that assertion seems to be mm. held there. All right, finally, our Ghanaian brother, Tariq Lamte, mm. Bryson is planning to hand him a new deal. Of mm -hmm. course, our eyes are on him for possibly playing for Ghana. Mm -hmm. According to the Sun newspaper, the EPL side, Brighton and Hove Albion, is planning to offer Tariq Lamte a new deal to fend off interest from Bayern Munich. Mm. The youngster started very well since his transfer from Chelsea earlier this year. He's nailed the right back spot for Brighton with back-to-back -back sensational performances. Mm. He's currently earning £14,000 a week, but the, the club is 
is considering boosting that to to keep him hold mm. on to him but yeah very well, impressive young man then of course there's lots of issues around covid and its rise in the, the western world we are told that there's gridlock in france in, in paris or they say traffic jumps out of paris as new lockdown begins story on bbc says traffic around paris hit record levels just as before a national lockdown came into force across france mm. jams stretched to accumulative 700 kilometers <laughs> in a place called ile de france region early on thursday evening lockdown measures came into force at midnight on friday to tackle or they come into force midnight on friday to tackle spiraling covid infections people have been ordered to stay at home except for essential work or medical reasons the president Emmanuel macron said the country risked being overwhelmed by a second wave that will no doubt be harder than the first we are told daily covid 19 deaths in france are at the highest level since april and on thursday authorities reported 47,637 new cases and 250 new deaths french media reports that many parisians have left the city and they are often crammed apartment to spend lockdown in the countryside and there's a beautiful photo put out by michael weber the traffic is like mm. just unbelievable oh, so gosh. ghana let's be careful let's yeah. stay safe let's yeah. wear the masks let's <laughs> not endanger ourselves with a false sense of security i think a word to the wise is enough <laughs> thank you Kukui. thank you nathan thank city you. business news